internet space place where a lot of people have been before these wow, you're, are you really rehearsed this one didn't you i absolutely did <laughs> is it working <laughs> no cool uh, uh. roll that beautiful bean footage What's going on, y'all? It is Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. That means it is time for the tagline. We are the Cine Fanatics. My name is Robert Adams. It's also time for white boy dancing, and my name is Chris Adams. Why? Why is it time for white boy dancing? It gets my energy up. The song just, I was feeling the vibes, man. I mean, that's true. That that song is infectious. Absolutely. Like, that's how I wake up in the morning, every every morning to that song. That explains a lot. Um. <laughs> oh my gosh. Woo. We are ready to go for this. Yeah. No, we're not. We'll start over. <laughs> I like it. Like already the show is doing fantastic tonight. It's best show we've ever done. I show sure. I show you. By had. far. Best show we ever had. <laughs> How are y'all doing in the chat tonight? Those of y'all here as we go live, if you are here watching us right now, sound off in the chat. Let us know you are here and say hi. I'm here. I, I figured you are here. I'm also in the chat. I, I see that. I didn't know you could do both. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a wizard. <laughs> I'm a wizard, Harry. You're a wizard, Harry. It's like the only quote I can do from that movie. <laughs> One of my special magic tricks is I can make my eye randomly twitch on its own for no reason at all. It's really annoying. Yeah, I can do that without even having to focus on doing that. It just does it normally anyways. Yeah. Anyways, what is going on? Vernon, Rachel, how are y'all doing tonight? Nice you know, to see y'all here. That's not the tagline of the show. Well, it's not number one in the list of taglines of the show. It might be like number three, though. Nice. Sorry. Anyways, we got a lot of we got a lot of stuff to cover tonight. We will be talking about some Star Trek news, including our own casting of if they were to do the next generation according to JJ Abrams type of style. Uh, so we'll be getting to that. We're going to talk about the Arclight movie theaters closing and what that could potentially mean. Uh, we got some other stuff talking about Ghostbusters, Gundam, Shazam, and Palm Springs 2. This will be interesting. So before we get into that, y'all know how we do on YouTube. If y'all got questions, comments, anything you want to say, make sure you get those in streamlabs.com slash cinefanatics up there above my brother's head. That would be a great place to get those in. You could also send them in by Super Chat. That is also something that we like, but Streamlabs is easily the much preferred. You um, missed an opportunity there to go set phasers to stun us with money. Wow. There's a reason I missed that opportunity. <laughs> Cause, Cause you're not funny. I don't know. I, I didn't have anything there. <laughs> um, what else do we want to cover real quick? At the top of this, let's uh, so let's talk about what's going on with Patreon right now. Uh, coming up this month, we've got stuff on our Patreon. Those of y'all who are familiar with us, uh, if you're not on our Patreon, here's some things that we have coming up. Uh, this coming Thursday, Thursday night, probably around like the nine central, so seven Pacific, ten Eastern. Uh, we will be doing our uh, movie trivia study session. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Vernon here, who's super excited for Star Trek, uh, helps us out with uh, questions and stuff in for this trivia study session, and he does a fantastic job. So, uh, if y'all not are if you are not on the Maverick tier, come join us for that. Uh, hop on the Maverick tier, come join us. And then the other benefit uh, that we will be doing going forward is if either myself or my brother have a match in the first class league for the movie trivia Schmodown, uh, we will review 
uh, shortly after the match, of course, not before the match, because that would be weird. And I mean, actually, that would be Time really traveling. cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know the answers. I'm going to get a perfect game. Uh, sports but, yeah, <laughs> great sports and all that. Good one. Um, after the match is over, uh, at some point, we will go and do like our reaction. Whichever one of us played the match will give like their thoughts and feelings and opinions. We did my match already a couple of days ago, which was a lot of fun to be able to really sit down and watch how my, my face was because I'm busy thinking answers to movie trivia questions, not necessarily how goofy my face looks. So, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, that one we made available for all patrons just so... So if y'all want to hop on that, if you're not a member of our Patreon, you can still see that video. It is on our Patreon. All you got to do is just hop on the Patreon at a dollar, the Neo tier, the one. The low, low price of one dollar. But after that, they will all be set on the uh, Maverick tier. Basically, if you're coming and you're participating in helping us uh, study and prepare for like movie trivia then you get the reward of seeing us talk about it afterwards. Just how much fun. I like, I love that again, behind the scenes stuff is something I'm always like interested in. So, mm-hmm. uh, that was a lot of fun too. So, um, so there's okay, that. Got- that that's coming up on Thursday. Um, on the 21st, 21st. that is, I believe, what is that? A Wednesday? That is our new watch along Wednesday. Watch a long Wednesday. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on this month, y'all, <laughs> uh, which I'll jump into here in a little bit. But, um, yeah, so on Wednesday the 21st, we'll be doing a watch along. We are going to continue uh, our watch along of the MCU movies. We're going to go into Thor. So that will be on Wednesday Wednesday the 21st also again probably around like that 9 central 7 pacific 10 eastern time frame. Yeah. And if you haven't uh if you haven't checked out our watch alongs before, we have done Iron Man and Iron Man 2. We haven't done Incredible Hulk just be- just because it's not streaming anywhere. Um or it wasn't streaming anywhere when we were at that juncture in the MCU. I, it might be somewhere now, but it's not on it's not on Disney Plus. So We are going to be hitting Thor next as it's next in the MCU timeline. We are going through those in the release order slowly. I mean, we're doing other movies in between for watch alongs, but as we are doing MCU, we're going in release order. Yeah. So we'll be doing, we'll be doing Thor. That'll be on the 21st. All you got to do is be at the dude tier on our Patreon for that. Dude. 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 Um, so that's it for Patreon right now. Um, I, I and I'll clarify real quick. I know, like the, I said, the movie trivia is going to be on Thursday. I know that's kind of short notice. Uh, we will probably do another one towards the end of this month, which we'll make that announcement as soon as we figure out what it is. Um, but yeah, we we'll, want we'll to make sure that we give like if y'all want to come and hang out and join for movie trivia type of stuff, we'll we'll give some time for that. Anyways, yeah. Um, so this coming this coming Friday, typically that is when we cover Fat Wuss. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that is Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And I say it like I'm trying to offend a bunch of people. It's kind of, I guess, fun that way. I don't know. Um, by the time we actually get like any real feedback on it, the show will be over and we won't be doing it anymore. So <laughs> yep. okay, <laughs> write it while you can. Um so that is typically on Fridays. Uh, this coming Friday, uh, I am participating in something. Uh, so I don't think it's actually been officially announced yet. So I'm not going to announce what it is or give any kind of hints or clues to it at all. You will not but be on this channel on Friday. You will be probably on someone else's channel on Friday. I will be, yeah, I will be over on someone else's channel. So just make sure you stay tuned to Twitter, uh, Robert Adams MLP, uh, maybe Cinefanatics uh, MLP also because we're probably going to retweet it all once it gets announced. Okay. Uh, but that will be on Friday, Friday evening. I'll be doing that. So that means we will be moving our breakdowns and reviews of Fat Wuss to Saturday. That'll be this Saturday, the 17th. Also, again, at that lovely time of around like 9 Central, 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. So, yeah. Uh, Gar says Incredible Hulk is streaming on Amazon Prime, iTunes, Vudu, and YouTube. Cool. Um, 
Maybe we go back and do like a public watch along or something like that later. We might do a public watch along of uh, of Incredible Hulk at some point. Uh, the other thing, uh, so I want to move into like personal because I feel like this this is kind of where this conversation is leading to, anyways. Is there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> there's a ton of stuff going on right now, and yeah, it's it's really causing a tightening of our schedules. And my shoulders. Ha-ha. And your shoulder. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I know like on my end of it, uh, we are down a couple of people at my job. So I'm working like 10, 12 hour shifts, whatever, uh, multiple times a week with uh, like maybe one day off every like five days type of thing. Um, so because of that, we're having to back off on the stuff that we typically produce for the channel, like the rankings. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to back off on being able to edit rankings and stuff like that for the next couple of weeks, probably. Um, I would like to crank those out because they're a lot of fun to do. It allows me to be creative with like the editing and stuff, but probably just not going to be able to get to it anytime right. soon. Why, why can't you edit them, Chris? Why can't you still produce them? Because I actually have a couple of things, good good audience member who asked that question. Uh, I have a couple of things that I'm also editing and I'm super busy with my job as well. So yes, unfortunately, when both of us are super busy and having to do a bunch of stuff, uh, we do have to put some of that aside for just now, just, just for mm -hmm. now. We will get back yeah. to it later. Now, that being said, if someone would like to put me like on a 40,000 at least <laughs> a year <laughs> payroll, uh, I will be more than happy to work on all of my own stuff. I mean, that's literally what it would come down to. So uh, until then, because that's not going to happen right now. Um, yeah, <laughs> Rachel, <laughs> Lola needs to learn editing ASAP. You hear that, cat? It's time to, to throw your weight in. You don't really weigh anything. So. Never mind. Um, <laughs> Too busy staring at that wall. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, she's she's going to take away from staring at the wall time, and you know how precious that is to Lola. So it's either that or her uh, b bathing time, which I'm pretty sure she's going to bless all of us with here in a moment. So keep stay tuned to this channel. Ridiculous animal. <laughs> Get Eric to edit the videos. <laughs> He's not that busy. There you go. Uh, if you don't know what he's referencing, he's talking about Eric Nerdchronic, who is an editor extraordinaire for the movie Trivia Schmodown. Uh, cool. Yeah, he's not busy YouTube at channels. all. Yeah, yeah, he edits for like a couple, a bunch of YouTube channels and the Schmodown. So yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a lot of stuff happening at work. Um, <laughs> God, Lola licks bring the clicks. Okay, sorry, I clicked on that. Um, and then uh, we also have, it's, it's kind of nice, we have a couple opportunities uh, towards the end of this month where both of us will be popping up on other, or both of us or one of us may will be popping up on various other channels for shows and stuff. Uh, I know it has been announced over on the PJ Campbell Network. I will be returning to Suddenly Soundtracks in the world of Lincoln Park to discuss uh, Meteora. That's going to be at the end of this month, and that's going to be a blast. <laughs> Lola's gone. No, oh, okay. Uh, the um, other thing, the other thing that we need to cover, and I forgot that we need to stick it on our calendar to make sure we are paying attention, is we do have the Oscars coming up. Mm -hmm. The Oscars are coming up this month, which means any free time we have, we need to be quickly finishing up some Oscar movies. What day is that? I believe that is on the twenty third. So it's the okay. So it's the day before the Schmodown's free for all. Oh no 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 no! The Oscars are on the twenty fifth. Okay, so it's the day after the Schmodown's free for all. Yes. And we have nothing else on the calendar that night. Let's let's do something. Um, I have no idea what we're gonna do. We might figure that out later. We very likely, so last year we did a live watch along. It was a very awkward setup where we pushed a TV out into the living room and sat on the couch and watched and muted it and everything. Um, I think we can get the telecast in here. I'll yeah, I think what, what we might do is we might try to do a telecast fr like from StreamYard where we're watching it and you see basically just this. You see us, um, but we can watch it with the headphones on this time. We can leave the volume up, so... 
uh, it will basically be a watch along for the Oscars. Um, I feel like that that would probably be a good way to make that work. That way, we're with within the comfort of say our bedrooms in a nice comfy chair that still really really needs to be replaced. <laughs> oh, I'm good. Um, yeah, yours looks nice. Um, and then like we could sit there. The problem with it last year was is we had to mute it during the awards because we didn't you didn't want we didn't want it playing where you could hear it because it would shut down the stream. Uh, this year we'll, we could do it like this, just like this, where we're hearing it through the headphones, and therefore we can leave the leave it unmuted so we can talk and be like, "Oh, wow!" It feels like that improves every single Zoom. year. Yeah, they're all going to be on Zoom. Um, for, oh, go for we it. both clicked on it at the same. Go time. for it. Nancy and HR that Chris needs to be free on Wednesday the 28th at 9.30 Central. The 28th, you say? That is, yep, that's what I'm doing, the Meteora. Which is fine. You can go do that because I know you're not a Leakin Park fan. No, and I'm not going to watch that anyway. Um, I'm not going to watch you do that. (laughs) Uh, The other thing to note real quick before we dive into any other like stuff is... Once Falcon and Winter Soldier is done, then obviously our our breakdowns will, of that will be done. Uh, next month, I believe, starts the Bad Batch over on Disney Plus. That I am planning on doing a probably a Friday night breakdown of when, once that begins. Uh, we have to see if that overlaps with Loki at all because when Loki starts, we will be doing the breakdown of that as well. Uh, um, I don't think so. I think Loki is so. not until like June something. Okay, so once Bad Batch starts, uh, at least I will be doing the breakdown of that. I am this this one over here has not finished watching the Clone Wars, and that's probably not going to happen be, before Bad Batch starts. So I have no idea not, who the Bad Batch is. <laughs> yeah, he has no frame of reference for the Bad Batch. I do, and fingers crossed, the guests that I am working on bring bring on in his stead will also know a lot about Star Wars and the Bad Batch. So. Stay tuned for that. More information on that to come, but we will be doing a breakdown of the Bad Batch once that starts. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I wanted to go back to one other thing. Going back to what Vernon was saying about uh, you needing to be free on that Wednesday the 28th. Uh, I want to plug that real quick. Uh, Vernon has been doing a show. He's now got his co-host, uh, Nancy Rodriguez. Uh, they're doing a... Uh, he, it's the fans' view of the FCL, uh, basically watching the FCL matches and the, they're doing a, a, a after show about it. And the way they have it put together, the stuff they've been doing on that so far is fantastic. Their yeah. last episode, they interviewed uh, Dwayne Burke, who's running the engineering for the first class league behind the scenes. Uh, and it was, it was amazing. I, again, if you're someone like me who enjoys the behind the scenes stuff that happens in producing a show like that with graphics and scene changes and all that. It's amazing to get that like behind the scenes info, the stuff that you don't hear about. You just, you just see images on the screen. You don't know like what the, the clicks behind the, the views and everything. So clicks uh, behind the views. yeah, go, go check out his show. It's a fan's view. Uh, Vernon, you feel just type, type the YouTube channel in the chat so people can click on it. Um, but yeah, go check it out. It's a good show. They they've got a really good product over there. So yep. I like. Yeah. Yeah. So like Garth is saying, Dwayne explaining and dealing with Skype issues and new layouts was interesting. Yeah. Um there it is. Hey, look at that. <laughs> there we go. Um, and then before we get to our stories, we usually like to talk about like movies watched and uh, movies you guys watched. We'll touch on that briefly because we got a few stories that we got to run through before we do the main topic for the night. Uh, movies watched. Did you watch anything new lately? No, I, I haven't had time. <laughs> nice. I've had uh, no time. I think the newest thing I watched for me was uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Oh, yeah. Yep. Which uh, you and I haven't even talked what your, what your thoughts were yeah. on that. Yeah, uh, I thought it was really good. First of all, you can see why Chadwick Boseman and Viola Davis are both up for awards. Yeah, because they both deserve to be up for awards based on their performances. That they were, they were both unrecognizable. Obviously, like you, 
you know Chadwick Boseman's face, so yes, you can see Chadwick Boseman. Viola Davis, it didn't look like her. No, not at all. She was she was very unrecognizable in that in the role of Ma Rainey. Did and she did a back, job. Did you go back and look at images of Ma Rainey to see like what she actually looked like? Yeah, they did a good job. They did a they really did good a job. They did a real good job on her. Yeah. Uh yeah, that was a fantastic movie. Um but Chadwick Boseman in that movie? Oh my god. What an what a performance. Guys, y'all should absolutely go check out that movie. Uh, I believe it is on Netflix. So mm-hmm. Uh, if you have the opportunity, I would recommend checking it out just for, uh, at, at the very least, for Chadwick Boseman's uh, final performance there. I know we're getting him. He's going to be in the What If series, lending his voice to Ch- T'Challa one last time. But uh, for that being like the last movie that we see from him, it's he put in a pretty dang powerful performance in that movie. Yeah. Uh, that's one I want to, uh, like, I would recommend watching that just so... I, I feel like that's one where he's very likely going to win the Oscar. And it, it's kind of cool. Like, I feel like when you see the movie and then you hear the, the win, that win, like, means a lot more to you. You're yeah. like, I have I experienced why this person is getting this trophy. You're like, oh, it's so nice to see that. Like, I can't wait till they actually call his name for winning that because that was such a good performance. See, that's the thing for me is like, Here's the thing. I would love to see Chadwick get a get a posthumous win for that mm-hmm. movie. And there's the part of you that's like, hey, you know, I want to see the essentially the lifetime achievement win for him at this point, uh, just because he was he's he was so good. He was so so good and dang near everything that he did. So, uh, but I can also easily see Riz Ahmed getting it for Sound of Metal too, because that was a hell of a performance. Also, yeah. Yeah, uh, I know. I know that one's going to at least take the uh, sound, the yeah. sound awards. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah, that's the other thing is. So now we got to find any spare time to quickly catch up on Oscar movies that we need to see. And from what I've heard, I can't wait to set aside some time for the father. I probably will not be watching that one. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go <laughs> off. I'm just gonna say right now. I'm probably not gonna be watching that one before before the Oscars. And I think that I think that I'm okay with that. I think that I think I'm fine with that. And I think that that one probably won't win. Oh, yeah, that one I, I've heard is gonna be hard. Uh, I'm not. I'm not t- too much looking forward to Mank either. Just because, again, I'm not a huge fan of Citizen Kane, and I know that's a, a <gasps> primary part of that. Mo- yeah, I know. It's okay. You you cannot like movies that a lot of other people absolutely love. It it's okay. It's fine. Everyone's okay. No one's getting hurt. It's you have to like the holy grail of movies. I do. It's called the Shawshank Redemption. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I am uh, the only thing that really has me interested in this is it, it, basically it's uh, Anthony Hopkins. Uh, like dealing with like getting dementia. Yeah, I was like, okay, that's a really good actor to see in that kind of a in that kind of a role. Yep. But at the same time, I've heard it's like really super depressing because yeah, he's getting dementia, and you're seeing like the rest of his family having to interact with him and just whew. So uh, the one I'm really interested to actually watch is Minari because I heard that was really good. Yeah, I want to see that one too. Anyways, so yeah, catching up on movies. That's what we're about to be doing here pretty soon. So we should get uh, into some movie news. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's one talk of the about movies that def- one of the movies that definitely won't be up for an Oscar was <laughs> Palm Springs. Palm Springs, <laughs> which I don't know why it was a movie that came out this past year. I mean, it has every opportunity to be up for an Oscar. I mean, really, how many movies came out this past year? Let's be honest. Vernon, ban this man. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding don't don't ban him it's a, it's a joke mm. it's a joke i like gar's comment there yeah uh bibiani's already gotten after me about my uh my n- unliking of uh citizen kane he, yeah. he i mean it's okay he's still like friends with me on twitter and we're still following each other i still uh will periodically ask him for movie advice and he still gives it <laughs> needless to say regardless of how my opinions of Sis Kane are. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, I actually really want to try some of Bibiani soap. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so Palm Springs 2. <laughs> There's a plug. <laughs> Salt yeah. Castle. Palm Springs 2 is apparently happening, guys. Uh, there's a sequel to that movie, which I thought was a delightful one and done. No. It's going to be a two and we'll see. Uh, I, I got to remember that one in the future. That, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Uh, here, the problem with this is... Like when a, a movie taking the the day repeating the Groundhog Day storyline from the beginning, you're already like kind of like pigeonholing yourself into a certain kind of story. There's only so much you can do with that now. We've seen that as uh, a couple of comedies. We've seen it as a complete like science fiction, sci-fi type of movie, and then. Uh, We've seen it as somewhat of a horror movie-ish, kind of. Not really. Uh, horror Happy turns Death, sci-fi. Yeah, Happy Death Day really wasn't like that much of a horror movie. It just had like a slasher element to it, but Thriller. nothing, nothing that bit. Yeah, and then so uh, that speaking of Happy Death Day, that's the point I'm actually wanting to make with this is they did a sequel. That came right back to the whole repeating day with albeit like a few like little changes to it, but it still involved having to go back into the day repeating storyline. I didn't think I don't think the second one worked quite as well. It completely like diverged from the horror element and went straight into just straight up science fiction. But I don't think it worked quite as well that second time. Yeah. And I think that's what we're looking at here is that if they go back into this day repeating storyline, it might have like some conflict with, is it going to make sense? Is it going to work? We already know that you, you're stuck in this and how to get out. So, Yeah, there's already some weird like science fiction elements like towards the end of this movie. And by science fiction, I'm talking about like certain things in the background that appeared that's like, what, why, 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 why were those there kind of a situation? Yeah, uh, but according to Andy Samberg, it sounds like this is going to be more like a Wanda Vision type situation. Which the hell does that mean? So I've seen Wanda Vision, they're going to be, gonna be honest, in Dick Van Dyke. I've seen Wanda Vision. I still have no idea what genre the, that TV show falls under. <laughs> so what? What, what do you when you say like oh, it's going to be like Wanda Vision? I don't, I don't know how I feel about that comment. That just feels like, uh, here, let me attach this to the latest thing that has all the hype to it. And, and hope it gains some traction. Yeah, hope it gains some traction. I don't know. I think, yeah, honestly, I, if just the Palm Springs 2 is happening, then that would be enough. But Well, so here's the thing. Again, going back to like the uh, happy death day to you, is that, uh, again, they did revisit the day repeating, but there was more to it than just that. They didn't leave it as just repeating that same day again. There was more elements mixed in with it, which is what I would assume they're going to do here. So that's why it, that's what leads into like the WandaVision craziness type of scenario. There's going to be other elements, but it probably will still uh, dive back into the day repeating at some point. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. It's gonna be one of those. Uh, we'll see how it how it plays out and what they do with it. It could be fun, mm-hmm. or it could just kind of because the first one was good. The first one was enjoyable. It was delightful. It was a fun little fun little flick uh, that we got to check out during during the thick of the pandemic that we're technically still in. Um, so we'll see if we're still in it by the time Palm Springs Two comes out. Um. And hopefully that'll be just as fun and carry over just as much delight. I have my doubts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, yes, this would be awesome. <laughs> just get two Andy Sambers. And one of, them, right. one of them calls himself Hot Rod. No, no, no. Don't, cool like, that movie. Don't like that movie either. Cool beans. What's wrong with you? Hey, name a movie. Just name a movie. Avatar. That's a terrible movie. <laughs> Give me another one. Uh, movie 43. That's a terrible movie. Do you got another one? Yeah, Shawshank Redemption. 
That's a fantastic movie. Screw you. You're not getting me on that. (laughs) You're not catching me on that. It's rabbit season. It's duck season. (laughs) Oh, man. Um, Anyways. So that's going to be... This also would be a good choice. Yeah, they're Sandy's. Yeah, okay. So that one was good. The pop star. That was a good movie. I like that. Uh, So... That's kind of weird. I, d- I don't know what to think of that. I'm hoping that it's more than some than just that, and they actually kind of give us more filler to it, because otherwise I have no idea. And no, Malcolm, it's not so bad. It's good. I, but it's I, like, it, it, it's a terrible movie, and no one should ever watch it. I've seen it twice. I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting. It's not bad. I'll probably check it out again later. Um, anyways, that's all I have to say about that movie. I'd like to think that movie 43 is a so bad it's bad movie. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like cats. Ooh. Yeah. But see, there's the thing. Like I'm not watching cats again. I'm actually surprised. I watched like whatever the honest trailer was for it. <laughs> like, must, they, must they release the ball? Good. Um, ugh, no, 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 no. I just want to know what that is. <laughs> I mean, like, just like all these, why is it they keep making like really bad, like remakes of movies that don't need like a a really bad remake done? Like, what was it? Everyone was talking bad about that uh, Charlie's Angels thing that Elizabeth Banks did. Like, that one got bad reviews. Like, they remade the, uh, essentially, a a movie based off of the movie that was based off the TV show. The one in the 2000s, that had Drew Barrymore and Lucy Liu in it. Like, that was fantastic. I liked that Charlie's Angels. It was fun. But, anyways, but also, speaking, of Lu- speaking of Lucy oh, Liu. Oh, okay, you were just going to go for the transition. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say real quick, uh, I want to make sure that we hit all of our demographics when we talk about movies that don't need to be remade, being remade when the Snyder Cut came out, and then movies that uh, that don't need to be remade Still asking to be remade for The Last Jedi. All right. Did we get all the offensive ones out of the way there? So speaking of Lucy Liu. I just said. All right. (laughs) Should just let you do the transition. Good Lord. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So she's been announced to be playing a a villain in. No, Malcolm. No, I'm not even clicking on that. Uh, She's been announced to be playing a villain in Shazam Fury of the Gods, uh, which is the sequel to. Well, Shazam. Malcolm, if you want so. No, God, God, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if y'all would like to donate to Streamlabs, we will prevent that movie from coming out. Just streamlabs.com slash Cinefanax, and you will never see that movie. I like Reach to think we're about to get a, a donation from all of the chat. <laughs> all the chat's going to like, no, screw you. We want to see that movie. Bring it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. You can have your money back. <laughs> All right, so Lucy Liu is going to be in Shazam: Fury of the of the Gods. Gods. That's yes. the word you corrected me on. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh. So she's playing a character called Calypso with a K. This is not to be confused with the Calypso with the C that is over in the Marvel universe. Because <laughs> heaven forbid if we get a Shazam Captain Marvel character confused with another like very like similarly named character over uh, on Marvel. Like let, let's just, you know, I mean, I, I'm almost expecting a villain to pop up in Shazam called Dr. Mood. That's I get a good it. Joke. That's a good joke right there. Y'all. I, that, I, well, God. Good joke. Uh, so the thing with this though, is Calypso is a original character made up for this movie. She's so she's supposed to be the sister of Hespera, which is Helen Mirren's villainous character in this movie. Both of which are again are made up uh, specifically for this movie. They're sisters, according to this movie storyline. Uh, they are both uh, they're both like daughters of Atlas, which is one of the the Greek gods that Shazam is getting his powers from. So. I don't know where the, that, that how that storyline's going to go. Maybe the the two sisters are coming back and they're wanting their father's powers stripped away from Shazam and they want it for their own family. By the way, I keep uh, looking over at the uh, 
in real time chat on the actual video over here to see if Garth is fact checking you on their actual existence. They don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I'm thinking that they might do. I'm kind of disappointed in that I would have half, half expected there to be some kind of an announcement of him actually having to fight Black Adam since the Black Adam movie has also just recently started filming. Ha, you didn't know that was going to be a part of our movie news that we talk about because it wasn't on our show notes here. Uh, but yeah, they, they started filming this Black Adam movie. I didn't put it in the show notes because I don't believe it's actually true. That they started filming Black Adam? There's no way that movie started filming. <laughs> after after how long was uh, was Dwayne Johnson sitting there uh, trying to get that movie out and produced? And I'll believe it when it's on the marquee in front of a theater. Yeah, at this point, uh, I I honestly like. Here's the I I believe that Black Adam will pop up in like a cameo in Shazam, uh, probably leading to like the third Shazam movie will be the the fight between. Shazam and Black Adam. So uh, we don't know what Lucy Liu's doing there or exactly what Helen Mirren's character. Again, I feel like they're probably trying to get back the powers from the, their father's powers back from Shazam. But it's nice to see Lucy Liu in something as Helen Mirren's sister too. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a crazy, crazy family. Uh, you know, they're gods. So it, it works out. Yeah. Um, I don't... Uh... I, I don't I don't know how to feel about all of it, but I do know that I like to see Lucy Liu back in something because I feel like it's been forever since I've seen her. Maybe I'm just not watching her. the right things, but I just feel like it's been forever since I've seen Lucy Liu. So I feel like nice. she was in something recently that I saw her, and it was like a very bit part, and I was like really disappointed. Yeah. So interesting, but yeah, it's it's interesting to see her take on a character, a new character, a character created just for this movie. Uh, and we, we know how like characters, the, the history of characters being created for other mediums and how they end up kind of falling back into comics later on anyway, like Harley Quinn, for instance, being created for the Batman animated show and then coming back into comics and everything later on. And now we see that she's dang nearly a primary focus of the DC movies as they are at the moment. So she's the DC version of Deadpool overall Marvel. Like it's it's the character that came out of nowhere in the '90s, and then all of a sudden, just boom, mega popular. Yeah. So, um, before we move on, we did get a super a super chat, a stream lab from all of the chat. All of the chat says, "Movie all right, here it goes." All of the chat says, "Movie forty three for the next Cinefanatics watch along, or we riot." Y'all are gonna You're riot. Gonna be rioting. Rioting. <laughs> you riot. That's a lose lose for us. You riot if we watch it. We riot if if we don't watch it. Like we can't win at this. <laughs> I'd rather y'all all riot than me have to wash my eyeballs. <laughs> Soap in the eyes doesn't work. I don't know if y'all have tried it. It burns. Were, were you talking about your eyeballs or your chin balls? So the next story on the list, <laughs> Malcolm will get that joke. Um, well, I get, I get that joke too. Oh, okay. Uh, so speaking of uh, big, giant, enormous things in places they shouldn't be. No, what? No, that doesn't work <laughs> at all. That's a good transition right there. I'm going to let it linger just a little bit. What are we talking about? What are you talking about in pl in places that they don't, they shouldn't be? It doesn't big make giant, any sense. Big giant things in places that, that they don't belong in? I got the big giant things, but the places they don't belong in makes no sense. Oh, so a big giant robot Gundam just belongs everywhere. Like wherever it's at is where it belongs. No. You fight it. You tell it. You tell it it doesn't belong there. And you I'm gonna teach happens. I'm gonna teach that giant Gundam a lesson. <laughs> Look, you giant the, Gundam. You try to tell the big giant robot that it doesn't belong somewhere. <laughs> Whoa, Robert! I can't burn the ban the person on screen. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, jo uh, Jordan Vote Roberts is going to direct a live action Gundam movie. 
I'm the down. guy who was in charge of directing Kong Skull Island, which up until Godzilla versus Kong, I was saying, especially on our watch along, that that was probably my favorite of the the MonsterVerse movies. Uh, now Godzilla versus Kong is easily, uh, but like he did really good at on Skull Island. Yeah. I like I like the stuff he did. He made a very enjoyable movie. And now they're going to give him another movie where he has to create some giant thing that people I I don't I'm not familiar with the story of Gundam at all. Uh, I I like Gundam. He looks cool, but I I haven't watched the cartoon, comics, whatever medium he is in. Uh, 1940s radio show. I don't know. I've just Wait, is, I've never. Is Gundam the name of a character? <laughs> well, okay, so I know it's like the. Like Gundam is like the class of the yeah. the robot ship suit like, thing. I don't I know. Was like, why are you saying he? It's not the name of a character. <laughs> anyway, Hi, my name's Stan, I'm Stan Gundam of Gundam, Gundam, and Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an itch on your back you can't scratch? You call Stan Gundam. Gundam. <laughs> he'll scratch that itch. He's got a back scratcher, and he'll take care of that itch. For you, we'll send a giant robot right down to take care of that itch. Uh, we're not liable for the fact that you might get completely squashed, <laughs> but you will no longer be itchy. Just no, we guarantee you will no, no longer be itching. The itches will be gone. You say that like we're contacting like a lawyer's office to take care of a back itch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, and that's like the most ridiculous part of that entire thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, uh, big giant robots. First of all, I mean, we we've, we've got a slew of big giant robot movies out there. It, you name it, it's it exists. Kind of a situation. Power Rangers. Uh, yeah, exactly. There's multiple live action Power Rangers movies. Voltron. All Power Rangers, all Power Rangers live action. Um, Transformers. Yeah. Transformers. Absolutely. So, the thing here though is that these are very like stylized. Go bots. Mm -hmm. we, we okay. <laughs> These are uh, very stylized uh, giant robots. Uh, I believe their origination was in Japan. I believe Gundam was a was started as like an anime or manga or something over there. So Hentai. Uh, you I mean, can tell that we don't know that much about Gundam, but we know just enough. Either way, I know enough to know that Jordan Vote Roberts is going to direct the hell out of this movie. It's going to be sick. I'm yeah. into it. I'm into this all over the place. So. We will ha obviously have to read up exactly what a Gundam is because I'm pretty sure it's not a back scratching company. I think I've successfully ruled that out because that sounds ridiculous, but I can't click on things. There we go. Wait, is that is that true? It's a special robot made with gundanium alloy metal and is stronger than the rest. Think vibranium. I'm think I I'm glad you said vibranium because my mind unfortunately went to unobtainium. Unobtainium, yeah. <laughs> but uh like I, i'm gonna guess that that's true because i don't have any way to I, there's nothing else i can do about it i just i'll believe it uh yeah. but i don't know exactly what they do i just know the suit looked cool like the robot the suit whatever it is it looked cool i know at one point i did have like a little action figure of it just because i wanted to own that thing suit. with no clue what what it is there's a suit I don't know if it's a suit or a robot. I guess it is a robot. robot. But <laughs> yeah. A robot. They actually have a... Uh, I want to say they re actually did recreate a Gundam. I believe it is over in Japan. And it does it does move. It's not like a full-fledged, like it's fully autonomous type robot type situation. It's still attached to like... Yeah, it's attached to like a, a giant tower, but it still kind of like moves forward and smoke and stuff. And it does move. It moves its arms and legs and it looks, it was sick looking. I was like, Ooh, that's kind of cool. So yeah. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, that's one that like, I want to see exactly what it is. And again, read up on exactly what it is. Uh, but as far as Jordan vote Roberts being able to do a big, something big and huge movie again, I'm all for it because yeah. he, he does big stuff really well. I really want to Google search this to find out if it's true. <laughs> we'll be looking that up after the stream is over. Um, 
I'm going to call you out, Malcolm, if it's not true. You lied yes. to us. You lied to us. Stay tuned to Twitter for all the details on that. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> uh, the other thing that was forgettable was apparently there was going to be a Ghostbusters movie at some point. I did uh, at one point forget about that. Yeah. Yeah, I did too. Until we got blessed with like a little tiny video. And I do mean tiny. Uh, showing the always delightful, the always 23 year old looking Paul Rudd, uh, in a Walmart. <laughs> it was a Walmart, um, yep. shopping for what looked like uh, Baskin Robbins ice cream because even though they uh, they terminated him in a kind of a discriminatory way, I would say they still never forget and they always know whatever the line is. I don't work for Baskin Robbins, so I don't always know all of that stuff, but yeah, Bas- Baskin Robbins never forgets. Um, they never forget. Yeah. Or always finds were, out. You got, were you, you going to add to, were you, were you going to add to your, um, or yeah, you got me messed up. It's Baskin Robbins always finds out. That's what yeah. it is. Uh, it's an elephant that never forgets. No, this, uh, this preview was funny. It is, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm of two minds about this preview. I, I assumed you got pictures and stuff for it. I do have this one. Look at He's that so little guy. Cute. He's trying to hit that, that baby Yoda market. That Grogu uh, market. It's going to succeed. I think it's oh, adorable. Man. I want to squish it. Um, I want to poke it in the belly and see if it goes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so they did like a, a very odd commercial teaser of some sort like this didn't to me this this thing with all these like little little stay puff marshmallow men running around and and going crazy and melting themselves and all that this didn't feel like an actual scene in the movie because you got paul rudd just in a random walmart grabbing a thing of of baskin robbins and then these little guys start coming up and causing havoc and it's it felt like a commercial for walmart to me or baskin yeah. robbins either one <laughs> Um, it felt like a situation I put it on Twitter. It felt like a uh, uh, Walmart, always low prices, always, and see see G- Ghostbusters Afterlife in theaters this fall. Maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> you, you get the point. That's that's like the type type of ad collaboration you see between movies and brands. So uh, the other, the other thing, like. though, the other thing that I thought was completely uh, right on this is he's basically getting like attacked ish uh by a bunch of these like little mini marshmallow stay puff characters this looks like this looks like someone was probably off to the side and took a picture of it and they put it on the people of walmart website where they shared like the pictures of generally what looks like uh like weird like redneck type people with their butt cracks hanging out while wearing weird leader hosen or something i don't know (laughs) there goes like part of our demographic for this for this channel good job I mean, it's the people of Walmart, so they probably don't have internet to watch us anyway, so, or they're borrowing it from their next door neighbor. I'm, I'm talking about the group of people who watch us who wear Lederhosen. Oh, no, nothing wrong with Lederhosen. It's just the combination. It, it, it's a tighter, uh, entitle, uh, entitled. It's <laughs> an entire harder. ensemble. Back to uh, harder. <laughs> I can't, I can't word y'all. I ha- I have word issues. I'm trying to word right. <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> I want to be normal, Chet. <laughs> anyway, speaking of people at Walmart, <laughs> that fits. <laughs> I think um, what, I, what I found funny about this is one of the marshmallows melting on the, uh, on the barbecue grill as he was like going down in flames gave the little, Gave a little thumbs up. The, the, like, termi- the Terminator two thumbs up as he's going down in the fire. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this. This whole thing felt like a weird like kids cartoon, but at the same time, it's like it's it's not indicative of the entire movie. There's no way one little scene is indicative of the entire movie. So uh, I'm not going to be one of those people on Twitter who rush to the well. This looks like complete crap. This looks like it's going to be garbage. And it's like, how can you? How can you tell? It's not even, it doesn't even feel like a real scene in the movie. It feels how, like a commercial. How does that look like crap right there? That is the cutest little marshmallow I have ever seen. And I still want to eat them. I want to eat them too. <laughs> I don't know. 
Uh, I don't think, yeah, I don't think this is indicative of the movie. I think it's, it, it looks fun. Uh, I'll wait. I think till we, we were see. better with the, the, the movie 43 talk. I think we need to go back right. to that. <laughs> it, I want, I want to eat them still takes place for that movie too. Um, anyway, yeah. so I want, I, all I want really at this point is just another, another trailer for this movie. Cause I think, I think that's what we need. Uh, mm-hmm. I know right now it it does look like it's scheduled to come out in November. So I believe it's supposed to. I don't know if they was supposed to come out in summer again, and they pushed it back again. But uh, I know it's supposed to come out summer last year, and obviously it didn't. But uh, I think it's supposed to come out in November. So that means we probably get a trailer, another trailer of some sort. What July? Yeah, I feel like this was released. This was released just to again, kind of like the joke we were making that we forgot that this movie came out because uh, that was completely a joke. It wasn't. But uh, I feel like this this little thing was released uh, just to kind of reinvigorate. Like, hey, there is a Ghostbusters movie coming out, and that it was just enough to stay in public conscious for like another month, month and a half, and then we'll see another like full trailer. So it was just kind of reawakening everyone like, Oh yeah, that was supposed to come out last year. Also along with all the other movies I forgot about. Uh, So I I believe that's what it's for. Uh, Speaking of other movies that have trailer that we've almost completely forgotten about uh, tomorrow, the internet will be gracing us beautifully with another trailer uh, for F nine. Fast and Furious Nine. Yes. We finally get to see more footage. You know, you remember there's only one trailer that's been released for that movie. That's insane. And that trailer was released with like a three hour long concert that they spent like oh. millions of dollars on marketing on. And then right after, I think it was like within days of that trailer is when they're like, uh, guys. We're gonna push this to next year because I don't think this uh, this pandemic thing is uh, is gonna be stopping anytime soon. And woo, they were right. <laughs> I th- Dr. Fauci works for Universal and is predicting movie release yeah. dates. <laughs> I guess. Who knew Fast and Furious Nine was able <laughs> to accurately call that this thing would not be over in a year? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, Man, so- they knew it. They knew it. <laughs> Uh, And let's go back. I know we've talked about a couple of times on this, so I'll quickly sum up. Uh, Like marketing, when you're talking about how much money is being put into a movie, that mark that movie that money number typically does not include marketing. That's just the amount of money that was used to make the movie to begin with. We typically don't get like the marketing numbers. Uh, We do know again, Universal spent like uh, millions of dollars on this concert and trailer uh, reveal. Must be Uh, nice. But then the movie didn't come out. So very essentially, they spent all that money for a movie that they're not going to see like a return on that particular investment for well over a year. And now they're releasing another trailer, which means that was more money pumped back into marketing with the hopes that this movie comes out soon so they can see something coming back from that. Uh, yeah. So I'm hoping this is a really good trailer and they just, they're going to give us like that really good wow factor with this one because yeah. they need it. <laughs> they judging desperately based, need it. Judging based on how the uh, box office has been looking lately, especially with uh, Kong versus Godzilla, sorry, Godzilla versus Kong. Can I ever get that in the right order? Um, oh, God- Godzilla. No. That Godzilla versus that giant monkey. You call it a giant monkey? Shut up. Um, so, <laughs> just based on the box office, which I do want to bring up box office again on this on this show uh, again at some point. I know, like mm-hmm. we were starting to bring it bring it back into the fold once uh, once we had Tenet and and New Mutants, but then it kind of went <laughs> again. Uh, so once we start getting more movies into the theaters and start getting like box office stuff, we'll be doing that again. But, um. I completely forgot the point I was going for. Honestly, I were trailed you trying off. to do a, seg- a segue yet, or no, I wasn't. But you want to make it one? Uh, Fast and Furious Nine. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to that movie. I don't know. <laughs> <Move on. laughs> 
Would you like to do a trailer reaction tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I don't have a choice. We run a we run a movie YouTube channel. I, I do mean, want to do have it. a choice. We we've unfortunately had to pass on the hitman's wife's bodyguard that trailer that came out today. So yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of there's there were some trailers like that we haven't been able to hit just because. I mean, I am off tomorrow, so we could possibly do a reaction to to F9. Can we call it Fast and Furious 9? I don't want to call it F9. Ah. It sounds it sounds like a button on my keyboard. I think I think I found my point. Okay. And it's, and it's that I don't think F9 gets pushed back any further. I think they're comfortable with their marketing dollars because the box office is coming back. It is being yeah. reawakened again. So whatever resting place F9 is at right now is going to be its its it's home for, for being released into theaters and, and all that. So we do get to see it in theaters again. Uh, I think that was loosely the point I was going for. Uh, speaking of theaters and resting places. After Han comes back in F9, they need to do a solo Han movie. I see what you did, Garth. And we like it. We approve. Speaking of movie theaters. You approve. Garth, can you uh, time yourself out of the chat? <laughs> Um, speaking of movie theaters and final resting places, uh, I, wow, yeah, uh, that was dark. the Arc Light Pacific Theaters and Arc Light over in LA are not reopening. They are they are closing, unless of course the petitions and everything I'm seeing online right now can somehow save them, which would be really cool because I actually have never we've never gotten the opportunity to see a movie in the Cinerama Dome. And that looks like, yeah, that thing, that looks like a fun, a fun uh, experience. So. I think this picture actually was from like the '60s because that uh, that vehicle on the right hand side looks like some kind of like a Studebaker or something with wood paneling. <laughs> so uh, that's actually kind of a cool looking theater. <laughs> I was gonna say, is this from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Uh, possibly. Uh, yeah, uh, we haven't been to an arc light theater. I know that they are all the rage in LA. Yeah. Um, I know there's the, there's the one we've heard of, like a lot of, uh, people in LA go to the one. It was, is it Culver city? I think so. We walked past it. Yeah. We were, we ate at a restaurant, like across the street from it, so to speak. Um, but we haven't actually gone to one, so. Uh, that would be nice because I heard that they're a really nice theater chain, but mm. yeah, I would, I would really like to be able to experience uh, going there, going to one of those. But as of right now, it doesn't look like that opportunity is going to be afforded to us ever again. Um, but I do know that pretty much everyone we know who lives in LA, who does anything movie business wise in LA is screaming their head off right now about how unhappy they are that the arc light is is closing down and it sounds like again like you said it was like the premier place to go see movies almost literally premieres in in uh in los angeles so it's one of those that's like i don't know there, there's some history behind it it feels like so i'm it, I'm hoping I'm hoping at least at the very least that Cinerama Dome is going to be saved because I think that that just just based on the history that that place has that it, it makes it makes so much sense that if it's not Arclight, maybe AMC swoops in and buys it up or maybe, you know, Alamo, Alamo, somebody that, that, that would be something that I like as again, as Austinites where the where Alamo Draft House started. Uh, we know Al there's an Alamo Draft House in LA that's also very popular. I believe that's the one that's actually backed by uh, Quentin Tarantino. So um, it, it's very possible that Alamo Draft House could swoop in and and help at least save that or turn it into an Alamo Draft House while keeping the aesthetic and everything. And that's something that uh, Alamo Draft House very likely would do is try to keep as much of the aesthetic of that place as possible. So that yeah. would be a good one as well if they're able to do it. But yeah, yeah I'm really the Alamo Cinerama Dome. Yeah, that would be the only that would be the only disappointing thing is I think you would probably lose like in this picture, you would probably lose where it says Pacifics. It would actually probably change to like Alamo's Cinerama Theater. 
I, I believe everything else about it would stay the same, including the uh, 1968 uh, time frame, as uh, as Garth is pointing out in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, in comparison to Alamo Draft House, this is, I think we, we actually reported about this uh, a couple of weeks ago that the Alamo Draft House that's uh, downtown Austin, which wasn't the original, but it's essentially the, the original closed down and they moved it like uh, around the corner and down a yeah. couple of blocks. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, it is the original Alamo. Um, it's one of the more historical ones downtown anyway. Yeah, that one is shutting down. The rest of them are still staying up, but sucks. like that really sucks. Yeah, because I remember I remember seeing the accountant there, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, we'll take the over and say, "Remember the arc light." Yeah, I forget. I saw the accountant, and, and then we saw Iron Man three there. Mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, so it sucks. It sucks that the pandemic has caused these theaters to kind of have to close down for good. Um, I know that. Was it Regal was having troubles there for a little bit? And I don't I think know if the, the Regals, I think, are still closed. Yeah, they're still closed. I don't know if they're coming back or not. I know AMC, Cinemark, they're all making their returns. Uh, we have a mall near us, and there's a there's an AMC in there that they're only open on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays right now. So there's it's it's an interesting way for theaters to kind of slowly make their way back to normal regular working hours again is mm -hmm. just be open on the weekends kind of a thing so yeah um anyway so hopefully everything turns around for the arc light i know again like you're saying there's petitions and hopefully like whoever the people all backing the hashtag restore the snyder cut could also maybe throw their all important hashtags over to restore the arc light theaters <laughs> that would be fantastic that would be great if y'all could do that just just place a review for uh, godzilla versus kong and say restore the arc light theaters that would be great if y'all could review bomb them on that Restore the art <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyways, uh, let's move into our main topic because I'm kind of eager to dive into this. This sounds like this is gonna be a little bit of fun. Uh, and I know, uh, Garth, or like, not Garth, uh, uh, the other one, Vernon. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, <laughs> all, all y'all's wrenches look the same to me. Um, <laughs> I do apologize, guys, for uh, for my brother and his uh, insensitivity towards blue wrenches. I believe that he needs to take some time, and he needs to really think about uh, what it is that he's saying when it comes to blue wrenches. And okay, he's taking enough time. All right. So I just want to let y'all know that because of my previous statement, I have been sent to the official. Uh, Cinefanatics uh, sensitivity training course that we have here. Uh, it is hosted by uh, Matt Damon, and it was it was lovely. Uh, but I apologize for any blue wrenches I offend, um, and then uh, any possible green, yellow, or purple wrenches. If I also said anything against y'all, I have to apologize for that as well. But hopefully, y'all can. Uh, y'all can stay with me and we can all just be better together going forward. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, uh, guys, I apologize that when he was listing all the wrenches there, that he did not also include orange wrenches, uh, them too. <laughs> orange <laughs> wrenches can burn in hell. I'm just saying like, Oh, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. All right. Oh, spicy tonight. Aren't we? All right. <laughs> spicy like an orange wrench. Anyways. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's like a spicy Cheeto. I don't know. Um, let's move on to the uh, to the main the main topic here. Uh, so, <laughs> Gar says, "Is a blue wrench? I can forgive you, Robert. I'm adjustable. Nice, nice. The, the, that, that's a good one. I like that." Um, but yeah, let's move on to the big, the, the big topic here. Uh, apparently there's going to be a new, uh, what is she in there? Oh no, she's on my bed. I thought you were, I thought Lola was what? in there. Nope. Don't know what you're talking about. There's a new Star Trek movie coming out 2023 or set for 2023, which I mean, it's 2021. If they're making another Star Trek movie, they need to get, uh, they need to get to filming on that real quick. Uh, so we don't know anything about it. 
So because we don't know anything about it, and all we really have to go off of is really a title, or a title of a news article that says a Star Trek movie is coming 2023. That pretty much sums up the whole news story. We decided, you know what? Let's uh, let's make up our own thing for this. Speculation so, runs wild. So, uh, so we don't know if this is going to be an official continuation of the, I guess it's the Kelvin universe, the one that J.J. Abrams set up with his three movies. Uh, that just ended terribly because Star Trek Beyond is just not good. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, is that like the last Jedi of the Star Trek movies? I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of people who really like it. Uh, I know I didn't. I was kind of bored by it. It was, for me, it's the one that felt the most like an old Star, Star Trek show, which I I was not the old Star Trek show fan. I know so yeah. there's a lot of people out there who are, and so great. That, that was the movie for them. Me, I loved the first two because the first two felt more like Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, yes, Vernon, we will be. Um, <laughs> we need a graphic for speculation. God, well, we need a graphic for a lot of stuff on this, but That's true. Um, and yeah, we will probably uh, scroll back up and uh, check that out too. So. Um, and yeah, that's why Vernon has stuck around for the entire nonsense that's of this show tonight. <laughs> and that is the that is the next generation is what our parents watched pretty much all the time. So that's the one that I can like more closely identify with and and be more aligned weak. to and 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 be more of a fan of. Mm-hmm. My so. uh, myself included. Uh, I remember I think we saw we saw Generations in the theater. Mm-hmm. And I liked it. Like I know, I I know there's a lot of hate for that movie, and it's back to like the Star Trek movies. It's like the the odd number ones aren't good, but the even number ones are fantastic. I know uh, a lot of a lot of people don't like Star Trek Generations, but they did like uh, First Contact. I like Generations. I thought Generations was great, but. Again, that was coming as a as a kid watching the next generation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sorry, Garth. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I enjoyed Generations, and I've been kind of eager if they were to ever do basically what they did with the original cast. Would they do a Star Trek movie with the next generation crew, but completely recast them? That's what I, I kind of want to see. That. Yeah. And if they did, what would that look like? So, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the uh, Cinefanatics recasting of a Star Trek The Next Generation movie with all new actors. Let's see what we would put for this. Um, <laughs> this is where an- another graphic would be. Um, yeah. We did this before with, like, what what was it? Batman villains that we did this we yeah. tried to fan cast Batman villains. Now, luckily, <laughs> this is a much smaller list. We're not going through the entire plethora of Batman villains. Like, did we really need to like cast was an egghead or whatever the egg guy was in Batman? Like, no, we didn't need to do that one. But we're we're going to do like most of the main the main ones. And then I kind of want to leave it up for people like Vernon in the chat, anyone else who's uh, familiar with Star Trek: The Next Generation. Uh, if there's a character that we're not fan casting here uh, that you want to see, let us know. Super chats, yeah. <laughs> stream labs, and like throw those suggestions in there. And there's, uh, there's, we'll, there's we'll definitely see if we can pick up one on the fly. There's definitely, as I was doing my research for this, there's definitely a few that. Uh, it's an egghead, yeah. I was yeah, thinking Vincent Price, but. There's definitely a few that. Uh, Felt like more side side characters, more sideline characters in the series that uh, mm-hmm. we didn't already put down for this. So there's probably going to be a few that uh, that Vernon's gonna gonna be able to bring up there. But yeah, um, we should definitely go through these. Though, do we want to start just off the top with Picard? Or I kind of want to save Picard for last. You want to save Picard for last? Yeah. Because want- depending depending on what your take is on Picard, I feel like that will set the tone for the rest of your list. And if your or my Picard is a little eh, that might throw off people going, okay, your list is crap. I don't want to hear the rest of this. So let's go with like the minor characters who really don't mean that much in, in the grand scheme of things. And then also, guys, I know he, he 
Yeah, like Garth, Garth said, they're like Tasha Yar. Yeah, we don't have Tasha Yar on the on the list. She it's was Gwendolyn Christie. Grind- Gwendolyn Christie's Tasha Yar. That's easy. Oh gosh. <laughs> I mean, am I wrong? No. So you so you did do fan casting of characters that we don't actually have on the list. Um. Anyway. So where, where are we starting at? Are we going back the other way on this list? Starting from the bottom to the top? Uh, I guess we could start with Wesley. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Yep. We got Wesley on the list. Who do you got for Wesley? Also, you guys in the comments, let us know who you got for these also. And we can kind of highlight them and, and talk about those as well. Uh, Wesley, I was thinking of casting since this took place, since this started in the 80s. I would go with someone else who's known for being in the 80s. I will go with Finn Wolfhard. Oh gosh! <laughs> Why? Because of my choice and my pick. My pick was also in the '80s and is not Finn Wolfhard. I picked Noah Schnapp. Who's that? He's also in Stranger Things. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, if, unfortunately, if we had more time, I would have, like, graphics of what these characters look like, but we don't have that. So uh, feel free to Google the names of these people and characters as we do. But, yeah. Um, either but one yeah. of these. Here's the thing. Either one of these two, whether it's Finn Wolfhard or... Uh, oh, real oh quick, that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a good one also, that's, actually. That's, actually. that's a really good choice. Um, either one of these, Finn Wolfhard or Noah Schnapp, Either way, I can picture whoever is portraying Picard going, shut up, Wesley, to them. So <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. I think, I think either one of those are actually pretty good choices. But that would be, again, we're talking about if this movie is really going to be filming soon and, and setting and being set to release in 2023, now would be a good time to get either one of these two actors. Otherwise, you're going to have to go for someone probably younger. Yeah. Um, so let's move up to the next one. Uh, we're going to kind of like diverge from the actual crew. And I feel like we need to cast one of the villains of the show. Uh, I do fill in an air quote because he's kind of a villain. He's annoying, but he's fun. He, yeah, he's a fun character. And that would be the character of Q, famously played by John DeLancey. Um, who do you got for Q on this? This is a good one because... <laughs> For Q, I I don't feel like I ever solidly landed on one person for Q that I felt like super comfortable with. Uh, so there's two of them that I'm kind of like dancing back and forth between. Um, and th- I mean, so no, I'm not gonna say that. Uh, there's two that I'm dancing back and forth between, and I think for both of these actors, it would be kind of like out of the out of the normal. Uh, scope of what they've done. It would be a chance for them to kind of spread their wings and just have some fun with a role. Uh, And I'm going with either Sebastian Stan or Jake Gyllenhaal. And I think either one of these two guys could have some fun with that, with that kind of Loki-esque role. And which is why I didn't pick Tom Hiddleston. Mm -hmm. It would be kind of a, kind of a, uh, typecast situation fast been for you that's that not bad fun. either that could be fun okay so mine i kind of wanted to go like completely like left field and it's not someone it's not someone especially uh like first hint if you are a fan of the tv show or the amazon prime show the boys the boys uh, this is not going to seem like it fits so forget his character from the boys. Think of his character, probably more of his character from uh, the Hunger Games. I would say uh, I went with Jack Quaid. He was in the Hunger Games. Yeah, he killed Rue. Spoilers. Really? I yeah. forgot about that one. Um, Ooh, that's a good one too. Giancarlo Esposito is oh, cute. That would be good. That would be good. Oh. Yeah, you have to have someone with as much chop. Yeah, someone who could go toe to toe, like uh, s- smart wise, intelligence yeah. wise with Picard. Uh, yeah. I think Jack Quay could do that. Now, again, I, I brought up the boys because in the boys, he plays a very sheeply type of guy, just very. He, he He's not a huge, strong presence. He's a great character, but like 
the way he portrays it, it's it's not a a very powerful character. Kind of like what I would see. Q is is a very powerful character. He's got he's not like physically the, imposing. Yeah, he's not physically imposing, but he's got the powers of a god. So if you imagine like Jack Quaid, like in maybe like a nice suit or whatever, with like maybe his hands tucked behind his back, just standing there and watching stuff and like giving opinions and anecdotes over what's going on, maybe slightly manipulating stuff. I think he could do very well at that. That and I feel like that would be a good one. I think the I think honestly this role is probably the single role amongst all of these that we're gonna mention that has the most flexibility to have a wide range of individuals who could potentially play him. Yeah. Um I think Vernon is definitely right. You have to have someone who can go toe to toe with Picard. But if you get if you get the right actor to kind of like have some fun with it, almost anybody we mentioned here could fit into that, could slide into that role. Uh, especially like as they mentioned in the chat, Fastbender and Giancarlo Esposito, both fantastic choices. Um, I liked my kind of off the beaten path with Sebastian Stan or or Jake Gyllenhaal. Kind of, we saw maybe a little bit of, Jake, of that for Jake Gyllenhaal with Mysterio. Yeah, but that he also did that a little bit more over the top than you probably would find for Q. Uh, especially if you're going to use the Jake Gyllenhaal in that bar in mm-hmm. Far From Home, where he's like. He bought it, type yeah. of thing. That, That's exactly that what I'm thinking could, of. That could be very Q Q like in that. Um, yeah. So there's there's some choices. Um, let's go to uh, Doctor Beverly Crusher. Yes. So this so is be... Wes- Wesley's mom. Yeah. Picard, obviously, interest. obviously, for all of the, those who know out there, the, the thing that we have to keep into mind when we're when we're casting for Beverly is that. She has to portray the mother of the character we cast for Wesley, but also be the love interest of the person that we cast for Picard. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of like different different layers flying around there for, for this character. And also they've got to, we've also got to pick someone who could represent, uh, represent Crusher herself, represent Beverly herself. And she... She was a very she she strikes me as like a very no nonsense type of individual. Like she was very she was super level headed, uh, was a good voice of conscience, you know, at times. So uh I went you wanna do yours or you wanna go go mine? I could do mine because okay. uh going back to what Garth set up here with his casting. So he went with uh Jessica Chastain as Beverly Crusher. Um mine's pretty close. Yeah, Jessica Chastain for a slightly aged Beverly. Yeah, mine's pretty close to Jessica Chastain. I went with her identical twin of Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. So, and I think I think those are those are kind of the obvious picks. You either go with Chastain or or Bryce Dallas Howard, um, and you're picking someone who's just like a who can portray a no nonsense. She's obviously going to be a redhead. Um, mm-hmm. That kind of a situation. I went. A little bit. I feel like I went like a little bit younger than Chastain or or Bryce, and still within the realm of possibility. If you kind of play with ages a little bit, as in my pick for Noah Schnapp being, let's say Wesley is fourteen instead of you know sixteen or whatever. Uh, this person that I pick would be say thirty five instead of her actual real life age of thirty three, and that was Karen Gillan. Uh, I believe Karen Gillan could could do a, a pretty solid job. This would be a this would definitely be a different role than say like Nebula, uh, mm-hmm. different definitely a different role than uh, a lot of the these other roles that she plays uh, that you've seen her in lately. Um, wait, wait <laughs> to know your showdown questions about Karen Gillan. <laughs> Name her character from Jumanji. Nope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we will be Beverly. studying that. Beverly. Um, no, that was the other character. Anyway, yeah. Bethany, uh, that was the Jack Black character. But yeah. anyway, um, so yeah, I picked Karen, Karen Gillan there. Uh, let's see. And then you said you pick Bryce. Um, I, I like that too, though. Gillan would be more of a board queen. See, I, I get it, but I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that because it's now typecasting her as more of like a uh, mysterious, yeah, like, like 
android robot type person. If that's the case, I go more uh, Tilda Swinton for the Borg Queen kind of a situation. But ooh, that's good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to. I, no, that's, that's, <laughs> I don't yeah. know it. <laughs> that's the thing is, I really I saw Bryce Dallas Howard, I saw Jessica Chastain, and I thought I thought you know for for what we're going for here. I want to try to stay away from just the first obvious pick for everybody. And so I was yeah. like, who who's next down that list? And I, at first I was thinking you go between uh, Karen Gillan or maybe like a, a Natalie Dormer. And I was kind of thinking either one of those could be fun, but I looked at a, uh, I didn't, I didn't think Natalie Dormer would play well with who I pick as Picard. And then you got the, the Wesley choice and it just, yeah. So I went with yeah. Karen Gillan instead. So let's move on to the next one because I know my next couple of them. I feel like the the second I thought of it, I nailed it, and I I love my pick for data, and yeah. I'm eager to do this one. My data yeah. is oh good. Uh, who do you got for your data though? Uh, data. So sticking since we're coming right off of uh, Beverly, there sticking with the Guardians of the Galaxy theme, I mm-hmm. went and picked uh, Lee Pace for data. Lee Pace would be an interesting choice. I mean, I know he's like leaps and bounds taller than Brent Spiner, I believe. So yeah. uh, it would he's he's somebody who can just play. He can play robotic if he wants to, but he can do it in a very like he can do it with a lot of presence, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look at his his character in the Hobbit movies, him playing uh, Thranduil in the Hobbit movies. He he can portray somebody with like elegance to them. And for me, like data is somebody who as an Android has a sense of elegance to him. He has a sense of uh, properness to how he presents himself. I would compare, compare him to his role as uh, Ned on pushing daisies. That would be pretty close to data. Yeah. A little, little bit of awkwardness to him, but he's still like the prim and proper type of, yeah, and I, it, honestly, it looks like Vernon's kind of thinking in the same along the same lines as me with his pick with uh, Jude Law for Data, which should be also be an interesting choice for for Data as well. Uh, I think, and I think both of those are kind of up the alley of saying like picking Paul Bettany, who we know as Vision, kind of portraying yeah. the same type of situation with Data, which would be funny. But again, we're talking about like typecasting somebody. So I went with one that like. This, it, it takes a second, and then you think about it, and you're like, oh, yeah, that actually would work really well. I went with Timothy Chalamet. What? Yeah. Think about it. Timothy Chalamet. It, it's a younger data, definitely. <clears throat> Who did you pick for uh, Beverly again? Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. So I'm trying to get a sense of like where you're going age-wise for the entire cast. Mm hmm. So uh, basically, I wanted to go with uh, Timothy Chalamet, go like a little bit younger looking, uh, because it, like if, if you remember like the story of like Data's creation, um, which I forgot his father's name, like I, I, I it, uh, the story of his creation was a lot like of uh, like Geppetto with Pinocchio wanting to create a son type of thing. Um, that that was where I was thinking like Timothy Chalamet would play into that role. That's a really interesting choice. I don't I don't know if I quite see it. Well, okay. You're not a oh. creative visionary like I am. <laughs> well <laughs> so I'm um, I'm seeing yeah, I'm seeing the way like say like Brent Spiner portrayed data in the next mm-hmm. generation. And <clears throat> obviously like everything like he was saying was definitely was definitely more uh yeah yeah it was definitely more was more robotic was more android he was you know oh yes i yeah. believe now, that's, I believe now, that's true timothy chalamet basically doing the same exact stuff i think that could be interesting i think it has the potential to be to be uh like a situation where you have Heath Ledger cast as the Joker. It's one of those, we look at it and we're like, that doesn't make any sense. And then you actually see it and actually you're like, whoa, okay. I think especially, it has that potential. 
especially if you go the route of like data in generations where he gets that emotions chip put him in and he's learning comedy and sadness and anger and all that. That could but that's be kind of fun. That's kind of like a one-off story. They don't necessarily do that every time data yeah. appears, but uh, on the flip side, I could also see it just not, just not coming to fruition the way people might would think it would. So I don't know. I'm kind of either way on that one. Um, so next one is Jordy, Jordy LaForge. Who do we have casted as the person that could just tell you all about books? But you, don't have, to, you, you don't have to take my word for it. Yeah, <laughs> get it. It's reading Rainbow reference. <laughs> um, I love the reading Rainbow episode that he did where it was a behind the scenes of Star Trek: The Next Generation. That was a lot of fun. Uh, give me yours. You start on this one. Uh, so with mine, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I said this person, then I thought about it for a second. I was like, wait, this person's already involved in like a lot of wars in space amongst the stars. Uh, but oh, this actually, geez. I feel like, is really good casting, though. Uh, I went with uh, John Boyega. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, that's that's one of the ones I was considering. Also, I was thinking uh, John Boyega too, and yeah, and both Garth and both Garth and Vernon both are saying Donald Glover. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw. I, I could see Donald Glover as well, just because of how, like he he can do like everything. Yeah. Um. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, so my pick, my pick, I'm gonna have to show a picture because you don't immediately, you're not able to immediately like picture him uh, because what he's mostly known from movie wise uh, so far is uh, into the Spider Verse. Mm-hmm. Um, I went a little bit younger than the rest of the cast. Most of my cast, I think, is staying in the 30s. I went into the 20s, back into the 20s for this for this one, uh, placing Jordy just a little bit younger than the rest of the cast. And I went with Shamik Moore, who portrays Miles Morales in Into the Spider Verse. Yeah. Um, so just to, so everyone can kind of get a, kind of get an image there. Okay. So yeah, this I, is this. I can see that too. Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of who I have right now, kind of looking at uh, for Jordy. I can. I think this one because right off the bat, I, f- I feel like this is this is going to be an individual who. You know, we can see a lot of like talent coming from. I really enjoyed his portrayal of Miles in in mm-hmm. Into the Spider Verse, and he's obviously going to come back and play portray Miles again in in the sequel. Um, but I feel like I want to see more from him also in the live action side of things. And I think you put Jordy's visor on him, and uh, just knowing based on how he uh, how he performed as Miles, I think you can get a, a really good performance out of him. As Jordy as well, and I, I, again, I wanted to go kind of off the beaten path, off of what uh, uh, people might initially run to. So you have you have a situation of like the Donald Glovers or the or the yeah exactly. You have the Donald Glovers. You have the John Boyega. Uh, I know I was also at one point uh, going a little bit older with Jordy and considering like Lakeith Lakeith Stanfield again. You know, just kind of the usual suspects at this point for 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 like really great actors here and i think uh this was the one i was like this one feels this one feels a little bit more accurate to how they would probably cast the movie if you go back and you look at anton yelchin playing Chekhov in the original star treks i would not have a, in, initially picked him for mm-hmm. that role but it made so much sense you know you look at simon Pegg playing uh scotty you know, you look at the way they kind of casted in the uh, JJ Star Trek movies, and that's kind of that's kind of the direction I was thinking here. Is let's find somebody who uh, is going to be on the up and coming who can p- probably portray this role pretty well. That's a pretty good cast, yeah. Um, so next one that I want to get to is everyone's favorite Klingon. That would be Worf. 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 This is one that I'm kind of interested in knowing if we 
either landed on the same spot or if we were pretty close to I'm willing to bet you and I were probably pretty close on this because the one I picked seems like it's something that you would probably think of right off the top of your head as well so we're probably really close if not the same exact person I'm willing to bet this is fun because now that you said that I'm willing to bet we're actually very different oh that'd be kind of cool then (laughs) I mean, I'm uh, down for I'm down for this this party going any way it wants to go. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so for me, I went with again. We're talking about let's let's find someone who can portray the character, who has the presence to portray the character, the physicality to portray the character, and the depth of voice to portray the character. Uh, and I went with uh, Luke Cage himself, Mike Coulter. That is good. That is really good. And no, we did not choose the same person. Yeah. <clears throat> but you're going to see why you would think what I said when I say what mine is. Uh, so I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, two people that you're gonna, you're gonna, I'm thinking two people you're going to pick from here. Uh, let, I want to see what you, what your two are. But let, yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Give me, give me Channing Tatum. <laughs> Channing Tatum for War. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. That's, that's not one of the ones I was thinking. That's for that's, sure. That's definitely a take you could go, but um, <laughs> that's um direction. no, Mike Coulter. That's that's a really good one. Plus, you know, like, you what, the, yeah, he has the physicality. He has that voice. What you know? Let's let's get Mike Mike Coulter into into more things. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yes. I know. Like C- Christopher Lloyd was very famously. Uh, cling on so that's true um, uh, there's one think, there was one there's one I, that we met at that toy fair thing yeah. that way that long time ago i don't even yeah. know who it was i can't remember uh yeah so this is well this is true i think that we are for this for this casting where we're i'm looking at this kind of like as a prequel kind of like how the jj star treks were and so i'm kind of mm-hmm. doing a one-to-one type casting here to try to keep everybody Relatively the same as they as they were in the original series. Um, uh, two I'm thinking of that was <laughs> the two I'm the two I'm thinking of one of those of which is what Garth mentioned here is Winston Duke is Worf, which I think would also be a, a decent choice. That's good. Um, but the other one being uh, Jaimon Hansu. No. Then the uh, the last other one that I was initially thinking of that I was uh, almost uh, uh, that I I'll was almost you- wanting. I was almost wanting to pick here, but didn't pick is uh, Ray Fisher. No, but I'll give you a hint. Y'all are really close with uh, Winston Duke and not from a Black Panther movie or any Marvel. Well, there's no one else in us. Yeah, there is. Is there? Hmm. Oh, yeah. There is. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's that's not a bad choice. Go for it. Uh, I went with uh, yeah, yeah. Abdul Mar- Martin the third. I think no R in his last name. Martin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I went with him as Worf. Uh, I thought like he's got the physicality. He's got the the facial expressions, the presence. He could do. I feel like he could do Worf very well. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's actually a good choice. I think he was one of the names that came across my mind also at one point. But um, he he's, he strikes me as somebody who is uh, getting picked up for like all of the all of the different like franchises and stuff. Like he's someone who's definitely on on an upswing as well. Yeah. So that's that's actually a really good choice as well. Um, so we'll move on. Yeah. We gotta, Let's move on it. to Deanna Troy, Counselor Deanna Troy. Now, this one's an interesting one also because, again, you when casting these, you have to look at you know what a casting director would do is that they're looking at, okay, who are we casting and who are we casting for, say, Riker? Because this person has to be someone who can be a love interest to Riker as well. So... Uh, It'd be a little funny with mine, but okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, make, uh, I'll try to make it work. <laughs> did you not stick with that that kind of thinking? Uh, I mean, I there's a world where I think mine is possible, 
like if you've seen the greatest showman then mine will probably be within the realm of possibility but wait did you did you pick uh <laughs> zach efron and no and, uh... although zach efron probably wouldn't be a bad choice i didn't put zach efron as Riker or zach or, efron. Deanna, or, or deanna troy <laughs> yeah um anyway for Troy, I went. So we, she is supposed to be Greek in ethnicity, nationality, however you say it. Um, I went I, with. I did not stick with that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't stick with that either. Uh, yeah, that looks like uh, Vernon was kind of heading in that direction a little bit with Mila Kunis as Troy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went with. Uh, different side, uh, Spaniard, Spanish, Mexican, uh, went with Ana de Armas as Deanna Troy. Oh, you just want to put her in this movie. Let's just be uh, honest. <laughs> hell yeah, I do. Uh, give, give Ana de Armas some role. She's fantastic in many, many ways. Um, but yeah, uh, she, uh, she a hundred percent, I think, I mean, counselor Deanna Troy. So she, she was somebody who, of a very calm demeanor, a very calm heart who was able to like read those emotions and those feelings from, from others and assess situations. And she, 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 I, I, I just could see someone like Ana de Armas portraying her in a very, in a very like well-rounded way. Uh, plus mm-hmm. uh, who I pick for Riker, I think works for, works for Troy as well. <laughs> it's a Ben Affleck. <laughs> No, uh, I think that's <laughs> old news now. By the way, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, so for mine, I again, I, I was mentioning uh, the Greatest Showman. So for Deanna Troy, I did go like completely out of the out of the box. I went with Zendaya. Yeah, that's the that's what I was trying to tell you. Zac Efron and Zendaya for Riker and and Troy. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did go with Zendaya. I. I like the the idea of her being that counselor, uh, very strong role for her, um, and I I, I kind of like that idea. Like I so, I could see her doing that. You went you went young with with Troy. It is a little young, and that's why I said like it's gonna make possibly my Riker partner a, a little weird. But I looked up the ages and stuff, and I feel like it works. So, uh, oh, hold on. So wait. So, uh, Garth, uh, brought it up. Where was it? Yeah. Oh, the D- Deanna Troy wound up with Worf too. That makes your, uh, that makes your casting a little weird also. Cause you brought up uh, greatest showman. Oh yeah. They're brother and sister. And they brother and sister and greatest showman. <laughs> yeah. Right. And Zendaya. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not the first time we've seen, uh, two actors play, uh, a, a, a couple that are in into each other and then play brother and sister. I mean, that, apparently that happens a lot nowadays in movies. So we'll just saying backwards there. Um, yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, the other way around, but okay. Still. Yeah, that's that's funny. That's actually really funny. Um, yeah. And then Garth says he goes Gal, Gal Gadot as Deanna Troy. Not Greek, but plays Greek characters in movies. That's And that's one of the ones I feel like that's... If it wasn't that I feel like she's so attached to a franchise with Wonder Woman, I would be a little more... I'd be a little more interested in casting her in another franchise, but I think I don't, I don't necessarily know if she, if she inherently would fit the, the cast I was going with. So that's kind of why I diverted away from, from gal myself, Mm -hmm. but I'm looking for like uh, younger people still in their thirties, maybe in the younger end of thirties who are kind of still coming up actors that can kind of like make these characters their own, like the JJ cast did. I think I, I think I went with the upper end of the thirties for my Riker. So yeah. So Zendaya, who's what? 23, 24. Uh, somewhere around there, 25, no. somewhere around there. Let's all sit in silence as he looks us up. So, oh no, she is 24. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mine's going to be like all kinds of weird then. Yeah. Her and Tom but Holland. I, 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 I think it, I think it's possible if you are doing something where you kind of mess with like the characters' ages in regards to the actors. I think it'll be doable. <clears throat> so, 
It's a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit of a stretch, though. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> Uh, so moving on to uh, Commander William Riker, who has the weirdest ways of sitting in chairs ever. I gotta be you honest. I would have. I would have gotten. I would have gotten to up to. It. Yeah, I would have gotten up to try it just now, but I probably hurt myself. <laughs> if y'all haven't seen, there's there's YouTube videos where people have spliced together uh, Riker sitting in chairs. Uh, I was talking about it at work one time, and I was showing it to my coworkers because we do have like lower. Uh, like couches and stuff that you can do the whole proper leg swing over to sit down. And it's so awkward looking. It's so awkward to do. Like, how did they think like this looked natural? And what's funny is I don't remember like when watching the show as a kid, I don't ever remember seeing him sitting in the chair going, Oh, that was weird. But now as an adult, you watch it you're like that. It's so strange. So yeah, go check out those YouTube videos. Cause they're hilarious. That yeah. Yeah. The Riker, the Riker maneuver. Yeah. Um, so for uh, Commander William Riker, um, who was always the one who was scared to death whenever they said fire at will. Uh, mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I went with someone who's actually already been named in this list tonight. Not by me, but by my brother. Uh, I went with Sebastian Stan. Yeah, see, there we go, because that's the thing. I was almost going to pick Sebastian Stan for Riker as well, and that's why I was like, move him off Riker, give him, put him over in the queue. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely one that I was considering. He's he's definitely somebody I can see, and yeah, that you're right. That would actually be kind of a, a little bit of a stretch with uh, Zendaya. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot that would be a lot of bit of a stretch, actually. I don't know if I can really picture that the chemistry they're really working out. Um, I like these others in here. Uh, Vernon saying, you know, give them Zach Efron or uh, R Pats. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Garth says Bradley Cooper. And, you know, with, uh, with all those choices, I, uh, they are definitely all going with the, uh, the suave charisma and charm. And that's kind of the direction I went. I went as well, but, I think I went a little bit more age appropriate with the rest of my cast too. And I picked Richard Madden who we will see in the upcoming Eternals movie. And you probably also saw, I believe in game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Um, I Richard Madden. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. I didn't watch that. <laughs> we have an audience, you know, it's not just oh. the two of us. Oh, there's a uh, camera on. Hello. Hi audience. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Throw some of that Riker facial hair, that Riker goodness facial hair on Richard Madden, and I think you have you have someone who could portray a good, slightly younger uh, William Riker. Uh, and I believe that you know, age wise, chemistry wise, he's somebody who could work well with Ana de Armas as as well in in that. Yeah. Um, so that I think that would be a that would be my fun my fun little choice for Riker, and I think. On top of that, when we talk about Riker, you also have to have someone who's going to have great chemistry as the number one, two, who we pick as Picard. And I think the way I have this between between Richard Madden and my the, the person I pick as Picard, I think you definitely have you definitely have a uh, a good a good combination there. Mm-hmm. Do you want, do, you, do you want me to bring it up real quick? I can. So that leaves us. Two, who do we have chosen for? You're actually gonna bring them up. Uh, if my mouse, oh goodness, nothing wants to work. Cool. <laughs> who do we have playing Professor Charles Xavier? Actually, actually this is a good picture. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, Richard Madden. Right, right there. Yep, kind of blurry. Oh, there you go. That's kind ah, of I can I can see Riker. Yeah, that's mm. maybe not with the curly hair. Maybe more of like the the suave oh. kind of hair that he has there down below. But well, no, yeah. the other picture, the other picture, since he still had the yeah the facial hair with the suave looking hair. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah I can see that. Rob Stark. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he played Rob Stark. Um, he's also like I said earlier, he's going to be in Eternals. Whenever we mm-hmm. get to see that movie, so November, <laughs> exactly. Um, so anyway, you were saying who's playing Professor X? 
Uh, so first of all, I did not go the James McAvoy route. Oh, it's so it was so it was it's so low tempting. hanging fruit. Like it's so tempting. Uh, so I had to think. I, I was trying to like brainstorm. Like, okay, what good like bald actors are out there? But here's the thing. I, it, it dawned on me. You can choose a good actor and then shave them bald. Exactly. It is possible to do that. Uh, so uh, this one was weird because the person, the person I selected does not like the, the second I say his name, you're going to have an image of him in your head and you're not going to, uh, you're not going to think it works. But if you look at his ability to act, his like how who he is and what kind of a like acting presence he could c- command, and if he shaves his head, I think it's very possible he could do very well at this. And I would be eager. This would be the one that I would say was the Heath Ledger Joker reference that you were making. Mm. This is the one that I think will be fantastic. Matt Damon. No. So for Picard, I went with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I know. It's it's an out there. It's out there. Uh, I got to tell you, I don't... For Jean-Luc Picard? Mm-hmm. He could do it. He, he could be the captain of that entire ship. He saying, could be that strong leading actor. He has that possibility. I'm saying for me, I got to find. So I'm working on multiple levels here with Picard. You got to find someone. Obviously, we're talking about who meshes well with your with your Beverly Crusher. <laughs> well, Vernon, I'm I'm going to try to save this here. Hold on. Uh, you got to find someone who works well with your your Beverly Crusher. You got to find someone who works well with your with your Riker. Uh, and you've also got to find someone who fits the charisma and the leadership that is not a one-to-one exact copy of, but can at least somewhat match in, in his own way to Patrick Stewart. Mm-hmm. For me, I decided that that person was going to be, and I'm stalling because I'm trying to get this done. Here we go. I'm going to bring them up also. For me, that person is Dan Stevens. Uh, that's good, too. I think Dan Stevens is the one that, you, I mean, uh, granted, we all, we're all we all saying this, but I, I, you, 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 you have, like, visible evidence of what Joseph Gordon-Levitt can look like bald from 50-50. I don't have, I don't know if there's any evidence out there as to what Dan Stevens looks like with, without hair. But I'm going to go ahead for the purpose of this fan cast, assume that he looks good bald because he's a good looking guy. Um, and yeah, uh, I pick him because I think one, he's he's also British. Uh, two, he's got the the command and the presence. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I mean, look like father, like son. Here's the thing. He works. He would he would work well in the role. I can, I look at him and I'm thinking Jean Luc Picard. This guy That's looks like somebody who's who's named Jean Luc Picard. I think mine is good. That I think that it would be something like out of left field that would impress people. Again, much like Heath Ledger as Joker. Yours does have the very obvious. The second you look at, especially this picture, the second yeah. you look at that, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that that works too. <laughs> yeah. That would work very well. Uh, yeah, no, that's 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 a good cast there. I, I I do enjoy. I think both of us have had a very good share of who we would cast. I actually, I'll, I'll admit defeat on this just on the Picard alone. I do think Dan Stevens looks looks like it, and I know he has the ability to play Picard as well. I think he probably would be able to do better than Joseph Gordon Levitt. Now, I'm pretty certain that I definitely casted him somewhere in the Batman villains, also. So. I think there's going to be a trend coming soon. <laughs> whenever we do is that Dan Stevens is going to get casted somewhere in whatever we're fan casting. Yeah. Um, so that's it going through the list of what we already had pre-planned. Do y'all want to 
uh, those of y'all in the chat, do y'all have someone that you want to hear? Like, if we were to quickly, yeah, no, I'm not casting Shiz on as Picard. I see what you're doing there. I get what y'all are trying to hint at. I'm not doing that. I'm not yes. referencing that movie at so, all. <laughs> our choices here are: I'm casting the son of Xavier to play to play Picard, or we're casting. Within the, the actual Star Trek universe itself, the clone of Picard to play. Picard. <laughs> We're not doing that. No. Hi, Lola. I did. I did think about Tom Hardy though, and I was thinking, man, if only, if only Nemesis didn't exist. If it, if it weren't for that, then yeah, I totally would, would be down for Tom Hardy playing Picard. But I just can't. I just can't wrap my head around the idea that he already existed as a Picard clone within the Star Trek universe, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but yeah, who else, who else is there? I know there's a lot of other really popular, uh, next gen characters that we didn't cast in there. Um, mm -hmm. some of them, I already do have pre-planned in my head who I would, who I would say, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give him the heat. Give him the heat. I mean, that man is a good actor, though. Um, and I can't believe he's actually older than me. That's that's kind of interesting. Uh, he still looks like a kid in some cases. So, I don't... I, here's the thing. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, he's got the acting chops. I'm sure he, he could pull off almost nearly anything that he wants to do. I just don't physically see him as Picard. I, think that, I, I really think that's where it really kind of hinges, and that's why I went with that. Is no, we didn't forget. <laughs> Guinan. There that's it gonna is. Be, that's going to be Whoopi Goldberg. There is it's, no one else that can play Guinan. It's still going to be Whoopi. It, it's still going to be Whoopi, except we, maybe uh, was it? Uh, oh, what's her name? Um, Okoye, Lupita Nyong'o. No. Okoye? Oh, Denai Guerrero. Yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking honestly, like either one of them, to be fair. But uh, like, you know, like I already had pre pre planned for if Guinan got mentioned, it was gonna be Whoopi Goldberg. You're not recasting that, but yeah, uh, but yeah, De Denai Guerrero. Like, I could see her. I could see her as as Guinan. Yeah. There's there's one though. There is one particular character I'm kind of hoping that y'all that y'all ask for real quick because uh, I can't wait to give my answer on that because it's a good one. If you if y'all could come up with other like side characters that were kind of like uh, maybe fan favorites, not huge, not that important, but we're <laughs> fan favorites. Are you sorry? Are you talking about one character who ended up in on Deep Space Nine? No. His name was like his. The actor's name was not, like Colm. Not not Colm Meany. Not not O'Brien. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Although O'Brien, I would I would cast. Uh, was it Chris O'Dowd? Chris O'Dowd's good. I would say like screw screw the age of the rest of my cast. Let's just go John C. Riley and get it over with. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, we did talk about who did we have for Doctor? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, what's her name? Yes, Jane. Oh. Yeah, Jane Lynch. Jane Lynch. Jane Lynch is Dr. Pulaski. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect casting right there. And you took that one. That. Yeah. We, we took that one seriously. <laughs> yeah, that that that's good. Yeah. Um, if y'all have any others, we are gonna wrap this up. So if y'all want to get any more in real quick, um okay, just as <laughs> just as long as Barkley coming. Uh, that's not a bad cast, but okay. So Barkley was the one that I had like already thought of, and I I love my choice for this. Uh, as a uh, uh, so Barkley was originally Dwight Schultz in Next Gen. Uh, for uh for this remake for Barkley, <clears throat> I'm gonna go with Charlto Copley. That's a smart choice. <laughs> Only Get because. It. Oh yeah, I, 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 I'm wondering if if people are able to get that one because that that was pretty good. Give it time um, for it to settle. So Barkley, yeah, uh, Instant Row. Oh man, I can't remember who I'd go with her. I don't have anyone for for these, by the way. I don't have picks for these. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Instant Row. I forgot what she looked like or who played her. 
Okay. Um, Ensign Row, I would probably go with. Uh, oh, what's her what's her name from uh, High School Musical? Vanessa Hudgens. I would I, go with yeah Vanessa Hudgens as Ensign Row. All right. Who do you got as Lexwana Troy, Deanna's mother, and Picard's love interest? Um, <laughs> Merrill Street. Um, <laughs> who's the love interest for J Joseph Gordon Levitt? That that's interesting. Oh, uh, what's her name from My Big Fat Greek Wedding? The lead. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, she actually would. Uh, okay, so my casting as Deanna uh, as Deanna Troy as uh, Zendaya aside, she would actually be really good. Um, what's her name? It's on the top of my tongue too. But there you go, Millie Bobby Brown as well. Uh, Nia Verdalos. Nia Verdalos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, her as Luxwana, that would be great casting. If we're sticking to like your traditional uh, Greek character, like Troy which, and Luxwana, which neither one of us did, so it would be kind of yeah. Uh, as as far as who I'd go with, if Luxwana was Salma Hayek. Yeah, sure. I mean, okay. I picked on now. You're, honest, now though. you're just fulfilling like a childhood fantasy at this point. Selma Hayek and Anna de Armas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the I, reason I see where you're going with that. I'm the reason that we get likes. I'm the reason that we will get Streamlabs. <laughs> as everybody will agree with Salma Hayek and Ana de Armas. Yeah. Anyways, um, so that's gonna do it for tonight, y'all. This was a lot of fun. Um, let us know what y'all think about like doing these fan castings. I know we haven't done one in a while. Um, and I think these are a lot of fun to do, especially when some of us come in with some really hot takes. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I guess, is how I'm reading the room. I see. Yeah, so uh, let us know what you think of this. Uh, like, would this be something that would be fun to do potentially on its own outside of tagline? You know, when I have time to do something outside of tagline. Um I have fun doing these and like, it was one of my favorite things reading a uh, wizard magazine. Yeah. Uh, I was saying, uh, Garth is saying no miles. Brown. Yeah. I was saying Chris O'Dowell also. Yeah. Yeah. I, agree with that. I was agreeing with the Chris O'Dowell as, uh, as O'Brien. <laughs> All of the chat says Robert Adams drives <laughs> away. Viewers, this guy. Yeah. Until I start winning matches in the FCL, then they all come running to me. Like this guy knows what he's talking about, except for Joseph Gordon Levitt. <laughs> I don't even like Joseph Gordon Levitt that much. I don't know why I got. How did y'all sucker me into? I blame all of the chat. Anyways, before this goes any more off the rails, would you this like to add? This could be fun to do again as long as we don't get more jiggle. Jiggle. Nice. Anyways, that's going to do it for tonight, y'all. Um, again, y'all can, uh, if y'all want to hop on our Patreon, which I don't know why you would at this point, but I mean, me. if, if, if you're doing you, it for me, forget, forget him at this point, you're doing it for me, please. Yeah, do it for him. He, he's the one that needs that money, anyways, for his stuff. So, yeah, yeah go ahead and uh, <laughs> that's not happening. That's not possible. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Anyways. Speaking of Patreon and training for the First Class League, we will be doing movie trivia uh, training on Thursday night, like around 9 Central, 7 uh, Pacific, 10 Eastern. Uh, so if you are at the Maverick level, come join us for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Vernon does a great job with that. Uh, don't don't get me yet, Garth. The, the stream is still, it's not over. I, I, I can hit um, it. Man, Garth, don't tease me with a horribly awful time. <laughs> uh, on the 21st on Wednesday the 21st of this month we will be doing our Patreon watch along of Thor uh, that is going to be at the due tier uh, so if you want to jump on the due tier that's what's happening on watch along Wednesdays as we're now calling it because apparently we have no Saturdays available ever again 
this coming weekend, we will be doing uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier Episode 5 review and breakdown. will be on Saturday of this week. Also, 9, 9 Central, 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern, because uh, I will be doing something on another YouTube channel on Friday. Make sure to tune in to Twitter for that as well. Uh, I think that's all that's coming up. Hop on the Patreon. If Well, okay. Typically, my brother says this, but we kind of already started with this. Hop on the Patreon. Even at the $1 tier on our Patreon, you get all the Discord benefits. So hop on there. Good fan community starting. So... And yeah, so watch along coming up and Twitter. Make sure you follow us at Cinefanatics MLP on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow us individually at Robert Adams MLP, at Chris Adams MLP on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox. Do you want to yep. do the rest or should I continue with the rest of them? Yeah, as well? I got this, guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Well, guys, this was uh this was a ton of fun. Um, this was this was a blast to talk about kind of our picks for for all the uh star trek well uh, here's the thing uh i'd probably be dead um this was this is a this <clears throat> yes uh this was a ton of fun and honestly <laughs> i'm just kidding uh guys we appreciate you so much uh remember to like and if you are watching this like after the fact you're not watching this live you're enjoying this on your own time not our time uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. What'd you think of our fan casting? What'd you think of literally any of the news stories we covered? Let us know. Make sure you share. Make sure you subscribe. You know all the stuff you do on YouTube. And, ah, yes. Vernon brings up, make sure you are returning back with us on Saturday for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier breakdown as well. That's going to be a ton of fun. Come back for the fat wuss. Come back for the fat wuss. Because we've been having a ton of fun with that. And... I know that I've <clears throat> made some comments on Twitter that apparently a lot of people enjoy and uh, seldom few people seem to not get through their dang stupid heads that they can't understand what's happening in the show. Um, stupid heads. <laughs> stupid heads. Stupid heads. Uh, I was not ratioed on Twitter. That's a good thing. Um, so anyways, guys, uh, for all of us here at Cinefinex, it's literally just two of us and a cat. We want to thank you for watching and we will catch you guys next week on the tagline at the same tagline time and place. Same tagline channel. That would be the Cinefin X, the one that you're on right now. I said place. Cool. Later. Bye. Seriously, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, what's wrong with you? God. <laughs> <laughs>